again. Welcome to week 7. This is the fourth lecture. I'll try and finish test case generation based on input space partitioning. What did we look at till this week? We saw functional testing. I told you what are the various kinds of functional testing. Then I told you what is the basics of input space partitioning. In the last lecture we defined partitions. I told you how the input space could be partitioned in several different ways. One way we looked at was what was called interface domain part based partitioning. The other one was functionality based partitioning. So we revisited the triangle type examples and then uh, we saw how each of these work. Today what we'll be seeing is what are the various coverage criteria that we can define based on the partitions. Typically when I consider input domain there is one domain for every kind of variable that is a part of the input. So and there are several different inputs each have their own types each have their own domain and each of these input domains can be partitioned in several different ways based on what is the requirement that I am considering and what is the requirement that I am trying to verify. For interface based input space partitioning we consider input separately as we saw in the last lecture. For functionality based input space partitioning we partition the input based on the concerned functionality of the program under test. So now what we will see is that how do we combine all these various partitions of inputs? Is there a clever way to combine, a better way to combine, an easier way to combine or a focused way to combine these so that we can test them? So what we'll be seeing today are various coverage criteria again defined independent of any examples. I'll explain these coverage criteria using an abstract example. In the next lecture, we will take a concrete example which will be the triangle type program that we saw and see how these various coverage criteria can be used to define functional test cases for the triangle type program. So the various coverage criteria that we will be defining in this lecture are listed here. We will work with six coverage criteria. First one will be all combinations, second one will be each choice, third one and fourth one will take pairs or will take tuples of length t. The fourth and the fifth one, I mean the fifth and the sixth one will fix one coverage criteria like a base choice and then define cr criteria based on that. Between these criteria, Almost all the ways of partitioning an input that we know of till date in test case generation will be covered. So we begin with all combinations coverage abbreviated as ACOC. What does it do? It says you take input domain, you partition the input domain of the various inputs, you consider every combination from every partition. So it's just this exhaustive testing based on partitions of the input domain. So all combinations of all the blocks or partitions with respect to all the characteristics must be used to be able to test it for ACOC. So suppose let's take for some piece of software for some input we have the following three partitions. Let's not worry about what the input is just an abstract representation of the three partitions. One partition partitions it into two categories two sets called A and B. Another input is partitioned into three sets call it one two three. The third input is partitioned into two sets call it X and Y. Right so there are three inputs First input is partitioned in two ways A and B. Second input is partitioned in three ways 1, 2 and 3. Third input is partitioned in two ways again X and Y. What does all combinations say? It says take every partition with every other partition to test. So what I do for the first input I choose partition A and for the first input I choose partition B here. Then I keep the partition for the second and the third fixed to be 1 and X, 1 and X. So here I vary the partitions for the first input from A to B. Similarly for the second input I consider partition 1, uh, I fix partitions 1 and Y for the second and third input. I again vary the partition 1 for, uh, for the first input from A to B. Similarly what I do here now I vary the partitions for the second input. I have made it, I have changed it from 1, I have made it 2. Here I again I have made it 2. So I consider A and B with partition 2 and X. So between the middle column I cover the partitions of the second input. In the third column I cover the partitions of the third input. In the first tuple here that 
I am running my cursor down, I cover the partitions of the first input. So the first input has two partitions A and B. I have varied them thoroughly. Second input has three partitions, one, two, and three. The second tuple in each of these test cases cover that. The third par uh, input domain has two partitions X and Y. The third input in each of these tuples cover that. So to be able to, this is the test requirement for all combinations coverage criteria. To be able to actually test it, what do I have to do? I have to pick up one test case for each of these partitions. So I have to pick up one test case where the value is from value for the first input is from A. Here one test case where the value of the second input is from 1 and one test case where the value of the third input is from the partition X. Similarly for the second TR, I have to pick up one test case where the value of the first input is from partition B, the value of the second input is from partition 1 and value of the third input is from partition X and so on. So now if you see how many different partitions can can be there for all combinations coverage criteria. Let's say each input is partitioned in bi ways, each input is partitioned in bi different ways and then there are n inputs. Then the total number of uh, partitions that I am targeting in all combinations coverage criteria will be a product of all these values bi. This capital pi that is written here it means it's a product. It's a product over i is equal to 1 to n bi where bi is the number of blocks that are there for each partition. So if you go back to this example the first input has two partitions number is 2 bi is 2 for that. Second input the B, bi which is b2 is 3 for that. For the third input the third partition b3 is 2. So the total number of test cases will be 2 into 3 into 2 that will be 12 and if you see 12 test cases have been written here. Now what is ACOC? ACOC or all combinations coverage criteria is not intelligent at all. It just tells you generate the partitions and just do an exhaustive testing with reference to all partitions. It is somewhat like doing all combinations coverage that we did for logic coverage criteria if you remember. Obviously we are generating the partitions to be able to test them in a slightly intelligent way. We are not generating the partitions to be able to test them for all possible combinations. So ACOC is not considered a great uh, test requirement coverage criteria and it really has no advantages. We begin with it because we define we would like to understand it for completeness sake and it is one of the valuable coverage criteria. Whenever the partitions are small maybe we could afford to do ACOC coverage criteria. And the thing is it may not be necessary all the time. So now how do we prevent ourselves from testing all the possible combinations? Are there better choices? Now the next coverage criteria that we will see is what is called each choice choice coverage abbreviated as ECC. ACOC says you take all combinations of all the partitions. Each choice coverage is the other extreme of ACOC. It says from each partition you pick up only one value. So what does each choice coverage say? It says you pick up one value from each block block is the same as partition. You pick up one value from each block for each characteristic and use it as your TR. So for the same example that we had where the first one was partitioning was AB, second one was 1, 2, 3, third one was XY, each choice coverage will have only three test cases randomly pick up. Let's say I picked up A for the, from the first partition, I picked up 1 from the sec, for the second partition and I picked up X from the third partition. In this case I pick up B from the first first partition, 2 from the second partition, let's say y from the third partition. Now I have more or less covered the two partitions a and b and x and y. The only thing that I have not yet covered is this partition 3 for partitioning the second input. So I pick up that for the third case and I can substitute either a or b for the first one or x or y for the second one. So I have chosen a 3x. So each choice coverage says pick one value from each block. That's all we've done here. So if the program under test has n parameters, let's say q1 to qn, and each parameter has, let's say, bi pa blocks or bi partitions, then what will the test suite for ECC will have? It will have at least max of bi values. Why is max? If you, As you can clearly see here, in the three partitions that we had for this example, only the second one, 1, 2, 3, had cardinality 3. So to cater to that each choice thing. We have to pick up one once, two once and three once. So and that's the maximum number. So we need maximum of those test case values. 
Like all combinations coverage criteria was like not a clever one. It included everything. ECC takes the other approach. It just, just says pick up anything randomly. So it's actually a very weak coverage criteria. There is a lot of choice available on what you can pick up and what you need not. And the, you might leave out some important combinations while testing with ECC. So ECC will not be effective for arbitrary choice of test values. So what do people do? People look for midway options between ECC and all combinations coverage criteria. One midway option is what is called pairwise coverage. What happens in pairwise coverage? In pairwise coverage, a value from each block or partition for each characteristic is combined with a value from every other block or partition for the other characteristics. So I take one part block or partition corresponds to one characteristic of an input domain. I pick value. Now I list out what and all, what are the other partitions that I've left out. I park this value, fix this value and then pairwise combine it with all other values. So a test suite that satisfies pairwise coverage will, have, will pair each value with each other value or it will have how many test cases it, if bi are there, bi is the cardinality of each block or each partition, then it's clear that it will have max i is equal to 1 to n bi squared values, right? Because I fix one bi and then I let it vary over all the other partitions. Then I fix the next one, I let it vary over all the partitions. So it's b1 into this, b2 into this and goes on. So it will be max of bi over the whole squared. So for the same example, we had this A, B, 1, 2, 3 and X, Y, three different ways of partitioning. Pairwise coverage, how many tests will I need? I will need 16 different tests. Why so? It, the way they are arranged, it will be clear to you. What I have done here, I have fixed A to be the thing that I want to consider in the first partition. I let the second tuple vary. I vary it over the second partition, 1, 2 and 3. I vary it over the third partition, X, Y. In this column here, I have fixed B from the first partition. I vary it over the tuple 1, 2 and 3 and I vary it over the tuple X, Y for the third partition. Now between these, I haven't covered the way 1 varies with reference to the third partition X, Y, the way 2 varies with reference to the third partition X, Y, the way 3 varies with reference to the third partition X, Y. That's what I have done here in the third column. In the third column, you take combinations with reference to the partition 1, 2, 3 and X, Y and choose pairs that let each of them vary. So here I fix 1, let X and Y vary. Here I fix 2, let X and Y vary. Here I fix 3, let X and Y vary again. Right? So if you count how many different test cases will be there, there will be so many different test cases. But remember one thing, we are doing too much of work here. In fact, pairwise coverage, what does it let us do? It allows the same test case to cover more than one unique pair of values. In some sense, the above combinations that we have listed out here, they can be combined in several ways. For example, I could directly do A1x, in which case I have done paired A with 1 and 1 with x. If I do A2x, then I have paired A with 2 and I have paired 2 with x. So in the first case, I do A with 1, 1 with x, I get A1x. Then I do A with 2, 2 with x, I get A2x. Similarly, A3x considers both the pairs, a pairing of A with 3 and a pairing of 3 with x. So once I've done here, I just need to pair A with y. And because I have already paired A with 1, 2 and 3 ones, I have put a dash here in the last line when I pair A with Y. Read that dash as I can feel free to choose any of 1, 2 or 3 for that. Because I have already paired A with each of them, when I pair A with Y, I can choose any one of 1, 2 or 3. Similarly, in the other case, what I have done here, we have paired B with 1 and Y together, B with 2 and Y, B with 3 and Y. What is left to be paired? B and X. While pairing B and X, because B is already paired with 1, 2 and 3, I put a dash to indicate that I can choose any of 1, 2 or 3 while pairing B. Is that clear? 
So moving on, pairwise considers only pairs or uh, sets of two. Uh, whenever we do sets of two, usually we can also extend it to an arbitrarily large number. So pairwise coverage can be extended to t-wise coverage. So instead of look, looking at a pair of values, we require t values. So what is t-wise coverage? It says a value from each block or partition for each group of t characteristics must be combined. If the value for t is chosen to be the number of partitions, that is the entire number, then t becomes all combinations coverage criteria. If t is chosen to be 1, then t becomes each choice criteria. If t is chosen to be 2, then t becomes pairwise coverage criteria. A test suite that satisfies t-wise coverage criteria as an extension of pairwise coverage criteria will have max over i is equal to 1 to n bi to the power of t values where bi is the same. It's a cardinality for each of the partitions. Again, like all combinations coverage criteria, t-wise coverage criteria is considered to be an expensive coverage criteria and is usually considered to be almost close to exhaustive testing or not necessary at all. So people usually uh, say that it's not wise to go beyond pairwise coverage criteria and empirical studies in software testing that involve input space partitioning also prove that t-wise coverage criteria is not a very useful coverage criteria but again we define it for the sake of completeness to indicate that whenever it is necessary it is possible to choose a t of your own t could be three four five if you have lots of partitions and then do t wise coverage criteria so now what are the coverage criteria that we have seen so far we have seen four different coverage criteria we began with all combinations coverage criteria which was like exhaustive testing with reference to combinations then we went down to the extreme uh, downside we said we'll take each choice coverage criteria, pick up one choice from every partition and then we did midway which was pairwise or t-wise where the value of t can be chosen by the user. Now all these coverage criteria put together have a bit of a disadvantage. What is the disadvantage that they have? They consider the combinations blindly. What do I mean by blindly? They don't really think what will be useful, what categories of combinations would yield faults with a higher chance. Maybe you would want to focus on a particular set of input values. Can I focus and look at only those input values and consider the partitions with reference to the others? They don't look at all this. They just look at things blindly. So now we look at two more coverage criteria that focus on avoiding this blind uh, combinations of partitions. Those two coverage criteria will depend on fixing one partition as a base choice. So the base choice is uh, what we call as an important partition or an important block for a partition of a particular input and we define coverage criteria on that base choice. Now if you go back to our lessons on logic coverage criteria, base choice coverage counterpart in logic coverage criteria would be what is called active clause coverage. If you remember when we did logic coverage criteria, we said I want to focus on one particular clause and see how the clause influences the predicate and the clause that I want to focus on will be called active clause. Similarly, we had inactive clause and we defined coverage criteria that will let each clause in turn to be the active clause and test. Right? So similarly here, when we look at partitions, there might be combinations or characteristics of partitions that I want to focus on to see how it influences a particular piece of software under test. So that block or partition that I want to focus on is called base choice coverage and we look at two different coverage criteria based on the base choice coverage. So the first one is plainly called base choice coverage. What does it say? It says a base choice, that is a partition of my choice, is chosen for each characteristic and a base test is formed by using the base choice for that characteristic. Once you form the base test, you keep it aside. Subsequent tests, which means all the other remaining tests, how are they chosen? They're chosen by holding all but one base choice constant and using each non-base choice in each other characteristic. So just to explain it in a different term, what do we do in base choice? The focus is I say I want to focus on one partition, one characteristic, call it the base choice, right? So for example, the base choice could be A1X. Take that as a TR, keep it aside. 
then subsequent tests how do i choose the test that i want to add on to it i choose by holding all but one base choice constant right and choose each non base choice in the other characteristics for example if you consider the same partitions that we had which was a b 1 2 3 and x y let's assume that my base choice is 1 a 1 x this 3 tuple a 1 x so the base choice test is this now what do i do i the other tests that i choose are picked up like this so what do i do i fix 1 and x instead of a i replace it with b right in the second case i fix a and x instead of 1 i replace it with 2 and 3 and in the third case i fix a and 1 instead of x i replace it with y is that clear so what i do is why i choose one uh, class uh, of partitions call it the base choice keep it aside then what i do is i fix I don't vary the other base choices, vary one base choice. Like for example, once I pick A, 1, X, what are these remaining four tests? How do I obtain them after picking A, 1, X as my base choice? I park 1 and X, I vary A to B. Then in the second case, I park A and X, I vary 1 to be 2 and 3, the other two blocks. The third case, I park A and 1 and I vary X to Y. So a test suite for base choice coverage, how will I calculate how many tests are needed? If you see, it will have one base test, which like this, which I've kept aside. And then it will have one test for each remaining block of each partition. That's what I have done here. So totally the number of tests would be 1 plus summation over bi minus 1, where bi is the number of blocks in each partition. Is that clear? So now moving on, here we parked one base choice. There's nothing that prevents us from parking more than one partition as a base choice. If I park more than one partition of the base choice, then I have what is called multiple base choices. So what does multiple base choice do? Multiple base choices say that I have to pick up at least one, maybe more, as base choice blocks for each characteristic. Then what do I do after that? Base tests are formed by using each base choice for each characteristic at least once so that's like doing this a 1 X where I had only one base choice here multiple base choices are there so you form your base tests by choosing each of those multiple base choice and all the characteristics after that what do I do I do the same thing that I did for each base choice coverage that is I hold all but one base choice at any point in time constant and use each non base choice in each other characteristic for example if you assume mi base choices for each characteristic and a total of capital M base tests then multiple base choice coverage MBCC abbreviated as MBCC requires how many tests this M is kept aside and then after that once I fix my M I can do BI minus MI and sum it over all that. Is that clear? So this is how base choice and multiple base choice. So what are the various coverage criteria that we have seen till now? We have seen all these six input space partitioning coverage criteria. First one that we saw was all combinations coverage up here. It was exhaustive testing with reference to partitions and all the characteristics. So in terms of subsumption relation, that subsumes all other coverage criteria. The next coverage criteria that we saw was each choice coverage criteria, which was the weakest of all the coverage criteria for input space partitioning because it just picks up one value from each of the partitions right and the choice of the values is completely random so it's quite a weak coverage criteria so once I have pairwise coverage which means I park one value and let the others do uh, vary and I consider them pairwise then I that extends each choice coverage criteria by definition and because t wise is any number assuming the t is any number greater than 2 t wise subsumes both pairwise and each choice coverage in fact as I told you, T-wise coverage will be equal to all combinations coverage if you consider T to be the cardinality of all combinations. On the other side, we do this base choice. It's like active clause coverage criteria of logic. I fix one partition, one characteristic as my base choice. Let the others vary. In plain base choice coverage, there's only one choice for the base. In multiple base choice coverage, there is more than one choice for the base. So by definition, multiple base choice subsumes 
single base choice. I don't use the word single here. And there are no cross subsumptions here. Pairwise and base choice, there's no relation. T-wise and base choice, there's no relation. Similarly, pairwise, multiple base choice, there's no relation. And all combinations coverage, definitely, because it's exhaustive testing, subsumes multiple base choices and base choice coverage. Is that clear, please? So what we will do in the next lecture is each of these coverage criteria, I'll take the triangle type example and I'll walk you through how the TR for each of these coverage criteria look like and how to write tests that satisfy test requirements for these coverage criteria. Thank you. Mm -hmm.